topic of this video is solving absolute value equations. Let's look at some problems. Find the real solutions of the equation. 2 minus the absolute value of 2x equals 1. Okay, so before we go through the formal steps for solving this problem, there's something that I would like you to recognize. Notice that what we are, what we are trying to do is to solve for x, and x is inside the absolute value bars. If I just temporarily cover up all of this part of the problem, the absolute value bars, what I'm going to see is 2 minus something equals 1. So, you know what has to go here, right? 2 minus what gives us 1? The answer is 1. So, whatever is behind that purple post-it has to equal 1. So what that tells me is the absolute value of 2x has to equal 1. This is a very useful way of thinking about algebra. Now, a more procedural way of thinking about algebra is to say, I want terms with my variable on one side and terms without on the other. So if I take this piece and move it over here, and if I take this piece and move it over here, the result will be this. 2 minus 1 equals the absolute value of 2x. Of course, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I get the absolute value of 2x equals 1, which is the statement that I wrote earlier. Okay, so now we're ready to solve this problem. We're going to replace the expression inside the absolute value bars with star. So I get the absolute value of star equals 1. Next, we want to get the absolute value of star alone. Well, it's already alone. Next, we want to ask ourselves, what are the possible values that we can replace star with to make this true? Well, the absolute value of 1 will give us 1, so star could be 1. And the absolute value of negative 1 equals 1, so star could be negative 1. Now remember that for this problem, star used to be 2x. So we can now replace each instance of star with 2x. Then, to solve for x, we just divide by the coefficient. So divide by 2 on both sides of both equations, and we get two solutions. x equals 1 half, or x equals negative 1 half. Could we check our work for this type of problem? The answer is yes. Let's show how to do that. Let's check one of our solution values. Let's check x equals negative 1 half. We could check both, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to check one solution because the method is the same. So 2 minus the absolute value of 2 times x equals 1. And we replace x with negative 1 half. All right. Simplify. 2 is the same as 2 over 1. And negative 1 half is the same thing as negative 1 over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So inside I have 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, over 1 times 1, which is 1. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So the solution checks, and we have a correct answer. All right, let's try another problem. As I'm erasing the board, I'm going to share an important property of fractions with you. The only way a fraction can ever equal 0 is if its numerator equals 0. If you understand what fractions represent, this makes sense to you. Remember, a fraction has a numerator and a denominator. The denominator tells you the type of thing you have. The numerator tells you how many. So if a fraction equals 0, you must have 0 of that thing, and therefore the numerator is 0. So here's a problem where we'll use that property of fractions to our advantage.
Okay, let's solve this problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the expression inside the absolute value bars with star. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, what number can we replace star with to make this true? And the answer is zero. Star is going to have to be zero because only the absolute value of zero will give us zero. Of course, in this problem, star was actually this entire fraction. So what that tells me is that 9x minus 5 over 5x minus 4 has to equal 0. Now, we discussed just a moment ago that the only way a fraction can equal 0 is if its numerator equals 0. So this tells me that 9x minus 5 equals 0. Adding 5 on both sides gives us 9x equals 5. Divided by 9 on both sides gives us x equals 5 ninths. This is our final answer to this problem. However, at this step of the problem, you might have been thinking to yourself, isn't there another way to solve this? And the answer is, there are actually several. Here's one of them. We can write 9x minus 5 over 5x minus 4 equals, and instead of writing 0, we'll write 0 over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself. This is now a proportion, and whenever you have a proportion of the form fraction equals fraction, the cross multiples must be equal to each other. What that tells me is that 9x minus 5 times 1 has to be equal to 5x minus 4 times 0. Well, we know that 9x minus 5 times 1 is just 9x minus 5, because anything times 1 is itself. And we know that 5x minus 4 times 0 is 0 because anything times 0 is 0. And notice what happened here. The algebra supports our previous claim that the only way a fraction can equal 0 is if its numerator equals 0. The rest of the solution to this problem is the same as the previous. So we get 9x equals 5. Divide by 9 on both sides. x equals 5 ninths.